In the next video for the YOLO Live YOLO box, we're gonna dive into some more of the settings. We're actually still live, so if you were watching the previous videos in our series, uh, you'll find just some quick unboxing, first thoughts on this, and just getting this set up. Let's go ahead and keep searching through to see what other settings and things that we have available to us. So I've stayed live. You'll notice on the screen there's a stop sign there. I verified that this live stream is on Facebook and looks pretty darn good. And I'm just streaming right over a Wi-Fi connection, with it, which is typically something that I would never do in most of my events. But let's go and run through these settings that we see down here on the bottom because I want to find out what they allow us to do and uh, see what we can find out. Okay, so the first one right there is overlays, and it is just reminding us that we have no sound just because there's no audio coming through these two feeds. We're just using a simple screenshot photo, so you can ignore that for right now, but it's nice that it lets us know that there's no sound going through. It's a really cool warning to have. I think that I would want every live streaming unit that I use to remind me of that. So we don't have any overlays, but we'd have to hit this plus sign over here in the corner to add them. And then we would have to choose whether we want to do a lower thirds or an image overlay. So just for testing purposes, I'm going to try out the lower thirds. And it looks like we can actually type this in right on the spot. So let's try that out. So as you can see there, I went ahead and typed in to our lower third just my name, Zephin, and videographer as my subtitle. It looks like we've got options for a subtitle offset right here and a subtitle scale. So let's see what these do. And I'm also going to drag the image around over here so we can place this exactly where we want it, maybe. Let's see. Okay, so it's not going to let me drag and reposition it. Let's start with these options. Okay, so the subtitle offset's pretty neat, and the scale is also pretty neat too. I want to figure out, like, what if I wanted to center this or move this lower third somewhere else over here? So I'm thinking let's reselect the template. Okay. So it looks like I have to choose where this goes vertically first. And then I'm just going to change our scale just for right now and just keep the template there. So I can choose the vertical, but it looks like I can't select the horizontal. So that would be something that I would say might be nice to see in a future update if it allows me to kind of move this left to right or center this if I want to. Um, maybe it's just something that I'm missing right now, like maybe one of these is more centered because there's a couple other options in here. So like maybe this one. Yeah, so you can see like this bar is centered across the screen and you know we could place this where we wanted to, but I don't necessarily always want to see a bar that goes all the way across. I would have liked to have seen maybe the option for the shorter bar that only took up a small amount of space and being able to drag that where we want it to. So I'm going to hit done. I'm going to just create this as a graphic. So now we've got our graphic overlay that's in the menu over here now. And I think if we want to take it on the screen, it's as simple as just selecting it. So let's see what happens when we do that. Hey, look at that. I selected it and uh, it faded onto screen nice and easy. So that's cool. Now what happens when we want to take it off? Well, let's go ahead and tap it again. And yeah, takes it right off screen. So that's super cool, really nice and easy to make lower thirds on the fly. I love that feature about it. Let's go ahead through the menu items and see what else we have available to us. So there is an option for just platforms and monitoring what this is going out to. Right now we're just sending this live out to Facebook, but I believe we can send simultaneous feeds. So if you wanted to go live on Facebook and YouTube at the same time, or you wanted to send out a custom RTMP, it's a really nice feature to have in here that you actually don't have on most live streaming encoders and units to be able to send it to one place at a time. So you usually need something like restream.io to do that, and uh, it's great to have that built in right here. Let's see about the sound settings. 
Okay, so a bunch of awesome sound settings down here. The first thing that I noticed is monitoring levels. So if I had a headphone plugged into the headphone jack on this unit, I could adjust the sound levels there. And then it looks like we actually have individual sound levels based on HDMI inputs one and two. And uh, if we had a line-in input or a USB input, we could also monitor or adjust those as well. So I love this right now. It's obviously doing it automatically. And uh, I think there's a few options down here too. So local video, I guess if we had a video that we played back on an SD card, we could adjust the volume of that. And then live stream, I don't know if that means maybe the live stream as a whole. Yeah, so I'll have to get back to you on that one. I'm not sure about the live stream option, whether or not we can impact that one. It was set on automatic, so um, these were grayed out right now. Maybe it's just because we don't have uh, a HDMI plugged into the HDMI output. So maybe this potentially means the video that's playing out over the HDMI output. That's something that we'll have to test as we go along. So let's see what else is down here in the menu next to sound. Scoreboard display. So this could be interesting if you were doing a live broadcast, I could see of maybe a football game or you know a high school soccer game, something like that. So let's just test this out and see what this looks like. Well guys, that is really nifty. In like five seconds there, I was able to add a team one, team two, and it looks like you can update their score live in real time. Uh, you can add time with a control over that as well, and you can reset the time if you needed to. Further down here, it looks like we have a period, so we could set it as first half or whatever period it is in the game, and then we've got a little team info button down here. So let's check out the team info and see what we get. So under team info, we get a game name, team one and team two name, and then check that out. We could actually upload logos for the team. So that's pretty nifty there. I mean, I could see this being used even if this weren't the end unit uh, for a live stream. Like if you had a bigger live stream with four cameras, eight cameras, something like that, you could feed them into the HDMI input here just so that you could still put the overlay on with the game score, maybe for going out to the live stream, but still have a clean recording of the actual gameplay for other uses. So I think that's a really nifty tool. I don't know that I would ever use this just because I'm not recording sports, so it doesn't make sense to be putting this on screen. But um, let's see what we need to do to take this off of screen so that we don't want to, let's say, you, you know, want to take it off and don't want to show it. So let's figure out how we do that. Okay, so it's as simple as that. We simply just hit the scoreboard display button and it brings it right off. Now, the one thing I didn't notice was whether or not it was a hard cut and it just disappeared or if the scoreboard display is actually fading on and off. So let's try it again just to see what happens. Okay, so it does look like it's a hard cut when we turn the display on and off. That's something that I'd probably wanna see fade on or fade off in the future or maybe animate on screen if at all possible. One thing I noticed too is when I turned it off and back on again, it reset the positioning of the scoreboard display, which I think would make it challenging because if I'm live and I go ahead and turn this display off and then turn it back on, it's not going to remember the position that it was in. And so I could see that giving me trouble in the future where I'd have to actually go in here and drag this display back down to where it needs to go again. I'm also noticing that it's not really snapping to any one direction. So if I wanted to get it back to the center of the screen, I just kind of have to guess. I'm not actually going to get a perfect idea of where it needs to go. And especially if I'm looking at it from here, there, you can see I'm having trouble getting it centered. So I would love to see that snapping to the center of the screen as an easy way to get back to its place. All in all, very cool feature to have. Not necessarily something I'm going to use in my live streams, but it's neat to see that. And I feel like there's a lot of other ways you could integrate custom graphics on the spot. But I would like to see an improvement maybe later down the road. And I know Yolo Box is really good at listening to their people. So Yolo Box, if you're listening, I would love to see it remember where that scoreboard display was at. All right, so let's keep moving. 
So next one up is the comments section. So really quickly, you're gonna see me go in on screen here to my computer off to the side. I'm gonna find the Facebook Live and see and post a comment in there so we can see what happens. So let's go ahead and uh, minimize our little guy we had on screen. I'm gonna pull up Facebook. And you can kind of see it on screen there. Let me bring this up a little bigger. Boop. It's as quick as that. So we've got our live stream in here. And uh, let me just leave a test comment as a comment from my business page. And I'll say testing. So I'm going to count down 3, 2, 1, enter as we see the comments. So you can see how quickly that actually goes in. So yeah, for some reason, our comments aren't going through. We were commenting live on the Facebook Live. Uh, you know, it could be just because it's myself and I'm the admin for the page, but I don't know that for sure. So we'll have to figure out why that was happening. I would imagine even if I commented as my business page, it should be showing up down here. So YOLO Live, if you're watching, I am sure this is something that you guys will update along the way and fix and you know, comment below and let me know if I'm doing this wrong, but I don't see my comment showing up on screen even though we're live on our page. And then uh, let's see our last settings menu. Okay, so our last menu right over here, we've got some settings. So video source switching mode, so let's check that out. Click to switch or double click to switch. So that's really nice if you want to have a safety and security, which we always recommend on your live streams. Uh, that's a really nice feature to have just to make sure you don't accidentally switch between something when you weren't meaning to. Next setting is uh, SD card videos switching settings. So let's hop in there and see what that and SD card management do. So one option is pause when switching resume first frame and pause when switching or continue playing when switching. So this is like if you wanted to bring on a video, switch back to somebody, bring on a video, switch back, you would want the video to continuously play. Or if you want the video to pause, then you would want it to pause so that you could come back to it exactly where you left off versus uh, resume first frame, I'm guessing, means that we would start over from the beginning. SD card management, so no card detected. I'm wondering if maybe this is just the ability to format a card when you have this plugged in. I don't currently have one plugged in at the moment. And then we've got an HDMI program out that we can enable or disable. Whoops, hit the wrong thing. So we've got an HDMI program out that we can enable or disable because you do have an HDMI program out feed, which is really cool. Video source transitions, let's check what we got in this option right here. So you can switch from a cut, fade, wipe, uh, directional wipe, a bunch of other options. So uh, let's go ahead and try, maybe let's try the simple zoom to see what happens if we have maybe one of these on when we're switching between our camera frames. Also. Kudos to you for keeping this menu up and letting me allow it while the live stream is still going live so I can change stuff here and not miss out on what's happening during the live stream. So let's go ahead and transition. Hey, look at that, that was kind of nifty. So that's what the simple zoom transition looks like. That's kind of cool. Um, we could try maybe a directional wipe. So nice features to have. Again, when it comes to transitions, I'm not crazy big on transitions, but it's cool to know that they're there. And I can imagine that uh, some of your newer users would definitely want to use those. So thank you, YOLO Live, for giving us some awesome menu options. If you guys like this video, be sure to click the like button and subscribe. And we'll see you in the next video.